Hi guys, Mr. John here. In this video I'm gonna show you this project that I built for a chap at work. It's a speed controller for universal motor. This particular specimen is from a washing machine. It's quite popular actually to reuse these motors because they can be found, they, you can get them cheaply and from junk. Either free or cheaply. Stuff like that. This particular unit controls the speed from about 600 RPMs up to the maximum what this can sink and spin at no load, which is a 12 grand easily. It's just stupid fast. This particular unit as well has a switch that in this position will be off and the two other positions are forward and reverse. Which one is forward, which one is reverse is purely is just relative to what you have this motor installed. What application you install this motor, whatever. <laughs> It's gonna be connected like that with terminal blocks. This one is to the mains. This one, actually, you need just six wires, not seven. But I put seven blocks on there because I <laughs> mistaken. Just a stupid mistake. Nothing to be confused about. These two wires on the left, the thin wires are the tackle. It's a little generator. These ones are either the field coils or the rotor windings. It doesn't really matter. All that matters one winding here, another winding here. And then with the help of the switch you can commutate them to run the motor either forward or reverse. Let's put it a little bit up and demonstrate. This thing has a soft start by the way. As you can saw, as you saw from the video, you can clearly see which way it rotated, and it rotated in both directions. One thing about the switch, though, it's not advisable to switch from forward to reverse from forward straight to reverse when the motor is still running in the, say, reverse. Oh, God damn it. What I meant to say, do not switch forward to reverse or vice versa when the motor is still turning. Wait till the motor is stalled, then do it. That's a schematic. Simple as it gets. It's just pretty much what it is, it's just a typical dimmer, right here. But instead of a potentiometer, which you normally see in place of the bridge here, a little cobbly circuit is installed, which is basically put in into the diagonal of this bridge, onto the DC output. And through this resistor, the transistor initially gets turned on as soon as this capacitor charges up and this capacitor charges up initially, eventually. To make sure that since you can see to make sure that the delay is more or less consistent, they put a diode there so basically this capacitor cannot discharge into anything, it can only charge. But by putting the diode there you introduce another 0.6 volts of a drop. And if you didn't have this LED and had a short circuit instead of this LED, the voltage drop on this diode alone would be enough to turn the transistor on when the capacitor is fully discharged. So that's why this LED is here to raise pretty much the threshold voltage at which the transistor is going to turn on. And there you can see two optocouplers, which basically all they do is they take the signal from the tackle, you feed that into the pot, then with 
the wiper pick off the some kind of fraction of that voltage, feed that into LEDs, connected anti-parallel. So because the output of the taco is uh, AC, it goes positive and negative. That's hence why you need anti-parallel configuration of the LEDs. And when the speed is too high, the LED will glow. These transistors will turn on, turning this transistor off a little bit. You effectively increasing the resistance of this diode bridge so it would take longer for that so it will take longer time for the triac to turn on it will spend the most of the hash cycle turned off and turn on only at the very end of it that, dep that all depends on the speed let me actually pop the cover off See how it looks inside. Not that great. Again, not that great, but get the job done. <clears throat> One thing I'm gonna show you is it, it it also has a regulated speed. I'm gonna just load the motor up by breaking with this piece of cardboard. All right, and you, oh, you see, look at the green LED there, and try. To see the change in brightness as I load the motor up. I'm loading it up right now. You can clearly see that the LED is glowing more, which means that the transistor is turned on more, which means that the triac is going to be turned on sooner in the cycle, delivering the most more power to the motor to keep the speed the same. Well, at least it tries to do that. Of course, everything is going to be basically um, limited by the power of the motor which is 365 watts in this case which may sound a lot but for the motor it's not that much actually and me putting it like directly on the shaft like that i can easily stall it even on the medium speed on the high speed i don't want to stall it because it's gonna burn through this cardboard faster than I can stall it, but I can. I just don't want to burn my fingers there. It's 10,000 RPM and causes a lot of friction. It could probably charge this cardboard. Anyhow. So that's a schematic. I'm gonna leave you here so you can use it for yourself. Alright, that's that. Thanks for watching. See ya.